rewarding careers, experiences of a lifetime. Explore Travel PT at ariusmedical.com. A-U-R-E-U-S medical.com. NPTE Study Cast. Welcome to NPTE Study Cast. I'm your host, physical therapist, Jimmy McKay. On the program is Bree Mercer. Bree, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Jimmy. I'm excited to be back again. All right. What are we talking about today for students today looking to take the NPTE? Um, we're talking about pressure ulcers today. Okay. Yeah. Topic everybody winds up seeing, especially when we're taking acute care in PT school. Um, looking at pressure ulcers, how do you describe that pathology briefly? So a pressure ulcer it can also come up as being called a decubitus ulcer um, or a pressure injury. Um, it's a wound caused by ischemia from sustained pressure, friction, or shearing forces to tissues. It's most commonly going to occur around areas of bony prominences and may also occur as a result of a medical device. But it's going to be most common in patients with impaired mobility or sensation. So a patient who can't weight shift or move around normally or who can't feel this sustained pressure and pain that might come with the damage to the tissues. Uh, Looking at pressure ulcers, uh, what's involved? It's going to depend on the stage of the ulcer. Looking at the different stages, a suspected deep tissue injury skin is going to be intact, but it's going to be an area of localized redness, dark purple, maroon discoloration that's non-blanchable. The damage is likely to the underlying deep tissues, but you can't actually assess it. In stage one, again, the skin is going to be intact. It's going to be an area of erythema that's non-blanchable. Then looking at stage two, and that's where you're getting the partial thickness loss of the dermis. This could be um, an intact fluid-filled blister at, um, in stage two. Stage three, that's where you get the full thickness loss of the skin and dermis. So you can see subcutaneous fat, slough or eschar may be present, but you're not yet seeing um, the underlying bone or tendon. That's going to be present in stage four. So stage four is the full thickness skin loss. It's going to have exposed fascia, muscle, tendon, ligament, cartilage, or bone. Um, But with any of these um, stages, the depth does not give you the stage. So that's going to vary by anatomical location. And then the last stage would be unstageable. It's going to be a full thickness skin or tissue loss. So it's either stage three or stage four, but it's covered completely by the slough or eschar. So you can't fully determine the depth or stage three or stage four. With what's involved, so I said before, you know, it's common around bony prominences. Yeah, the big list so, you wound up getting in PT school. I remember this well, yep, so go for it. Exactly. So looking at a patient who's been laying in supine for a long period of time, common areas would be back of the head, spine of the scapulas, spine of processes, elbows, sacrum, heels. If the patient has been sidelined, you're thinking about ears, side of the head, ribs, iliac crest greater trochanters, medial lateral femoral condyles, and then malleoli. Sitting, you're thinking about, again, same as supine spinous processes, greater trochanters, ischial tuberosities, sacrum coccyx, heels and toes. And then last one, prone, thinking about chin, cheek, and ear, um, if they're turns their head, anterior iliac crest, uh, chromion, patella, tibial crest, toes, and then genitals or breast areas. Differential diagnosis between pressure ulcers, it it could look similar to other pathologies. Where does your head go there? So thinking about pressure ulcers, I think about the NPTE is going to try and trick you and look at some of the other types of ulcers. So um, a venous ulcer, that's going to be looking more shallow with irregular borders. It can have the hemosiderin staining, so that's going to have that dark color that you might see in a um, suspected deep pressure ulcer. Normally going to be on the medial side of the leg, though, um, and that's going to have a lot of drainage. Um, Another type of ulcer that could be um, very similar to a pressure ulcer would be a diabetic or neuropathic ulcer, Um, and that's going to occur as a result of changes related to diabetes. So diabetes specifically, and it's going to could potentially lead, lead to amputation. And now those you're going to be grading using a Wagner scale instead of the pressure ulcer scale. The other ulcers, so arterial ulcer, um, that's generally more distal in the extremity. Um, it's due to lack of blood flow and not necessarily pressure. Those ulcers are going to be decreased in temperature. The wound is going to be very distinct and then little to no drainage. And then the last one I think of would be burns. 
So that's going to be damage due to a heat source, not pressure. So those, again, have a different classification system, whether it's superficial, superficial, partial thickness, deep partial thickness, full thickness, or subdermal. Treatment examples. All right, working with individuals with pressure ulcers or prevention, I should say, is where PT would like to come in as well. Uh, Where does your head go with treatment examples? So, yeah, like you said, definitely prevention is going to be our biggest area that we're going to work with these patients um, who have decreased mobility or sensation. So uh, looking at pressure mapping, so if they're going to be in um, in a wheelchair or a different assistive device, making sure that we're unloading those areas, those bony prominences, having a pressure relief schedule. So if they can't feel, you know, if they have decreased sensation and they can't feel when something's starting to be painful, making sure that they know how often they need to be relieving that pressure giving patient and caregiver education to avoid those forces with transfers and repositioning, making sure you're strengthening and training the patient so that they're using appropriate transfers and not getting those shearing forces, prescribing a wheelchair or other assistive device to get them out of bed and get them um, into these different positions to offload some of the areas, making sure that that wheelchair has features that allows the patient to offload if they can't do so um, independently. And then if they do have a pressure ulcer, then we're going to be involved in some of the offloading, um, making a plan with them if they're in the acute care hospital, and then working on wound care with that patient. Here's your example question. All right, last part of the show, the sample question. How might this show up on the NPTE? You're evaluating a patient with a T8 complete spinal cord injury and notice a wound on her big toe where you're able to see bone and tendon. How would you classify this wound? So the options that I gave were A, Wagner grade 2, B, stage 3 pressure ulcer, C, Wagner grade 3, or D, stage four pressure ulcer, or E, unstageable. All right. And uh, where'd your head go and why? So I'm thinking that, you know, this is a wound on the toe. Um, That's a really common spot for um, a diabetic ulcer. Um, But the key points that I put in the question were this person has had a spinal cord injury. So, you know, there's there's no evidence that she also has diabetes. So we're going to give it a pressure ulcer grade instead of a Wagner grade. And then bone and tendon are visible. So we know that it's stage four and not stage three. Perfect. Well done. Great run through of pressure ulcers for students on the MPTE. Bree, appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks again for having me. Download free study guides now at ariusmedical.com slash NPTE studycast. A-U-R-E-U-S medical.com slash NPTE studycast. Rewarding careers, experiences of a lifetime. Explore travel PT at ariusmedical.com. NPTE studycast. Brewed by the PT Pinecast.